It all began with the disappearance of one of the village girls. She went into the forest for mushroom gathering and did not return. In fairness, it should be noted that similar tragic incidents have happened before, but very seldom. Since childhood, the locals have known their forests in the vicinity of the village like the back of their hand, and there was no need to go deep for mushrooms into the death thicket, while there were plenty of mushrooms and berries growing literally under your feet all around the village. The missing girl was searched throughout the village and forest for many days, but she was never found. Village didn't have time to move away from the first heavy loss, as a week later, second disappearance happened. Also, a young girl, without a trace, recklessly poking herself into the forest all alone. Two people got lost in the forest in a matter of short time, is no coincidence. Locals began to talk about a pack of wolves and man-eating bear. Girls disappeared without a trace. Fear was spreading. It was spreading like a plague. Campaigns for mushrooms and berries have been sharply reduced. When there was necessity into the woods, well, forest is a food provider. Berries, mushrooms, meat, herbs, honey. People went in groups, big groups. In one of these group field trips, hunting dog found some human parts, an intact human hand. The fact that it belonged to one of the missing girls was determined by the ring on the finger of deceased. Such finding per oil into the fire, feeding a fear, creating rumors and theories. Reasonable explanation for disappearance and death of unfortunate people was explained by authorities as attack of animals, wild carnivores. The hunters and huntsmen raced for roundups, shot off several predators, and after that everything seemed to calm down. People felt relieved, mundane life started returning back to village, forest wasn't scary as much anymore. People began staying late outside, celebrating local anniversaries, visiting neighbors, working outside longer, business as usual. Only periodically in the houses located along the forest line, goats and sheep began to disappear, chickens and sometimes dogs. Understandable if chickens, because of foxes, but bigger farm animals, usually goats and sheep, were capable to fend foxes off. And people started worrying again. Recent memories were not forgotten, and rumors began rolling and growing like a snowball. And the authorities no longer paid attention to such trifles. The main thing is that people are alive and well. Or maybe villagers did not want authorities to get involved anymore. Who knows? Animals like goats and sheep got lost and disappeared before. Not big of a deal. Wandered into the forest, didn't find the way out, got lost, became someone's food. That's it. They perished. So, how I got involved with that story? Well, rumors. They spread. Heard about it in a tavern. The name of the tavern is irrelevant, stinky place, murky, filled with cigarette smoke so thick I was literally crying my eyes out. I was deliberately sitting near the door and facing it so to see who enters and to have a chance to grasp some fresh air that entered the gloomy place. There was nothing to enjoy but to listen what people gossip. This was hard to do in a place where speech becomes just a static noise. Most of things I heard was gibberish, until I heard keywords that attracted my attention. Words like forest, hunting, wolves, night, and most important word, fear. Words came from men sitting one table behind me. From what I heard, those were hunters that discussed how two months ago they were hunting wolves and bears in the forest of one village not far from tavern up in north. They bragged about how they managed to hunt down dozens of animals, eradicate entire wolf pack, because the pack was cause of people disappearance in that village. Most of the talk I had to make from context, because it was still hard to hear them in all of that bar noise. Of course, easier would be to offer them beer and befriend them, but this way I would expose myself to unnecessary attention, so I had to go with fragments I managed to catch. 
What was particularly interesting is that despite the fact that all carnivore animals in the region were hunted down, still incidence of farm animals perishing was high. Men laughed and enjoyed their evening, but I knew something was up in that village. Something that woke up my curiosity. While I have experience dealing with things of this nature, I decided to pay my visit to this place. I found it easily. It was relatively small, about 100 people lived there. First thing I had to do was to find elders and introduce myself to villagers. Nobody tolerates strangers. Wise people understood right away who I was and what I brought. I asked for shelter and allowance to live in a village for a couple of weeks. But not to be a freeloader, I helped with local tasks, fixed fences, fed and cleaned after the animals. Rest of the time I spent on the shores of the village facing forest. I set myself on a haystack, on one of many, and stared into the dark deepness of the forest in hopes to notice. I did not know what exactly, occasionally turning my glance to the left, then after to the right, observing the forest thickness. It was early months of autumn, so nights weren't warm anymore. Not freezing, but enough to have a breath vapor. Time passed. Nights were relatively dull, only chilling wind whistling through my clothes, but the mind was sharp as the spear. All I witnessed was a darkness, and only I heard was dogs barking from the village, or some critter rustled somewhere deep inside the haystack I was sitting on. Interesting thing occurred on the sixth night that happened to land on the first quarter of the lunar phase. This night happened to be the coldest. My hands were freezing. I tried to blow warm air into my palms to somehow warm them up and rocking myself on the haystack cause shivering was making me go insane. Almost a week on the field and no result. I was becoming impatient, somewhat frustrated. But lo and behold, looking forward into the shrubs in front of me, I noticed something in periphery on my right. On a far corner of the forest line, something appeared. A figure. Instantly, in the blink of an eye, my mind sharpened. Goosebumps on the back of my neck woke me up. Shivering gone, I started breathing slowly. From a sitting position I laid, sinking into the hay. Everything became quiet. It was hard to make out what this figure was. From afar it looked like person standing. I hoped I wasn't imagining, and it wasn't a game of my mind, because I was focusing myself on one direction, and now wasn't looking anywhere else. It moved. It moved a couple of steps, and then started slowly walking towards the village. Walking straight, and resembled a human. It was a human. I slowly came down from the pile and moved after the figure, quietly, not to lose the sight. It was quite a distance. As soon as the figure disappeared behind the first building, I started running in direction toward the building. On the corner of the fence, I slowed and stopped to catch the breath and to peek behind the corner. Figure was nowhere to find. I walked around the building. Nothing. Not a sight of whatever it was. Everything was still and quiet. No barking. Not a single dog. Only wind whistling was heard. I stayed around till the morning. On the dawn, I went back where the figure first appeared to look for footprints or any kind of tracks on the ground and another couple of hours wasted looking for something. Anything. No result. But now I was intrigued. Who was it? Or rather... What was it? Why it came out of the forest, deep in the night? Village. Oh no. In fast pace, I ran back to check on villagers and animals, asked around, yet I had to choose my words and hide my obvious excitement, not to scare people. Nothing unusual, everything was fine and well. Very odd. What was this figure? Figment of my imagination? Next couple of nights, I was very motivated, I stayed awake and sharp, but nights passed, quietly, no activity, nothing, it was full moon already. Strange that nothing happened after the night I witnessed this figure, 
or human or whatever it was. Something must be different. So in the daytime, I wandered around the village looking for anything unusual that could explain what was it. What was it that I saw a couple nights ago? I even asked around once again. While I was so persistent, it was mentioned that one local man has not shown himself for several days. In my mind, that's it. This is the threat I was looking for. Where is this house? I was directed to this inconspicuous house that lonely man lived in. I looked around and everything seemed to be normal. No unusual footprints around the building. Windows were shut and door was closed. I had to get in the house and only way was to break in as quietly as possible. Decided to go through window, cracked it quietly open and got in. The room was dark and smelled after a wet dog and decomposition. The stench was unbearable. I had to open all windows and the door to be able to see something. Everything was a mess, blood on the walls, ceiling, floor. Looking closer I found a rib cage on the bed and chunks of guts around it. What seemed to be the right leg was laying in the corner. No head but a part of what seemed to be a jaw was on a pillow, now red, wet pillow, and chunks of hair all over the place. I picked one up and inspected it. It was fur, and it smelled like a wet dog. I knew what I was dealing with. I knew it now. And that thing was somewhere here inside this house, hiding. As soon as I realized where I was standing, deepness of this manure bucket. Crap. I might be watched. It struck me like a lightning. What should I do now, not to provoke and worsen my situation? Worst thing I could do is to start looking around, because if our eyes catch the sight of each other, then sure I will join this poor fellow in the afterlife. What a damnation. Not to lose my cool, just turned back on all that mess and walked out of the building, shut the door behind me and kept walking. People gathered around the house looking worried, and one of the elders came up to me and asked, What's in there? We need to burn the house, right away, no explanations, no hesitations, gather your men. All windows and doors of this building must be boarded. Board up the windows fast and don't skip on the material. Use thick boards and long nails, we need to hurry. In no time wasted men started working, material was brought from every corner of the village. Some boards were taken off from the walls of nearby buildings. I saw horror in the eyes of men, hands shaking holding the nails and hammers. Experienced carpenters did not know how to hold tools anymore. I stayed, not far, and observed. Women and children gathered behind me, nervously whispering unintelligible drivel. Last nail shut. What now? Elder asked. Torch it. House was embraced by fire in no time, and dry thatching on the roof helped in own time, pitch black smoke and soot in the sky's red reflections in the eyes. Frightening growl was heard from the house, unbearable chilling scream that resembled woman and the beast, amalgamation in one horrifying sound. The crowd was in panic and backed away, only I stayed where I was, intensively staring at the burning house, not gonna lie, things I heard were frightening, that moment I did not know what to await, for what to prepare, beast kept screaming, did I underestimate what I was dealing with, suddenly one of the burning boards on the windows fell off and half-burned, smoking, bipedal humanoid jumped out. It resembled bear-like creature, but it was mortally burned, at least it looked like this. Abnormally long snout, white teeth, and black eyes. 
completely black eyes, no reflections in them. Not even fire was seen in them. Our eyes met, at least I thought so. It was hard to distinguish what was this creature looking at, me or ways to escape. It was no longer screaming, it just grinned with its teeth in threatening manner looking at me. I knew it was looking at me, and this fiend understood who I was. Now, what now? What is this standoff? Make your turn, you filth of darkness. It got down on four legs, about to jump and rip me in pieces. At least I thought so. But to my surprise, it slowly turned around and started walking back in direction of the forest, heavily limping and dragging its legs. I failed. I failed to burn it. I was ill-prepared. It was not the time to push my luck. But one thing was certain. This beast won't make any steps in this village anymore.